thank you. Well, hello everyone from Canberra where it's just started snowing. Um, I'm going to talk about two identifiers that you can include in your metadata. One is a unique identifier for a person or organisation who worked on the research and the other is a grant identifier which nominates who the funding agency was and the specific grant number in a consistent way. So I'll start with the party identifier. Many organisations have some type of record set that describes people associated with them. So it might be the research staff at a university, authors of collection items in a library, members of a parliament, actors in a theatre company and so on. A few years ago the National Library and ANS worked together to set up the People and Organisations Zone in Trove. Now our goal here was to bring together those records from different organisations and systems and to make them discoverable in a single place. We especially wanted to bring together records where the same person had different records at different institutions and we wanted a consistent way to identify that person across those different systems. So how does it work? Well, the first time we get a record describing a new person, like this one for Marcia Langton, we set them up a record in Trove, which is like a container. It acts like a big bucket. The next time we get another record describing Marcia Langton from a different source, we put it in the same Trove Marcia Langton container. We work with about 40 sources now and each source usually has a snapshot of the person's life and work as it relates to their own organisation. So for this Marcia Langton example, we've got four sources that have a record describing her and all have a different piece of information to bring together. Uh, Libraries Australia has an authority record that knows different forms of her name and the titles that she's published under. The Australian Women's Register has keywords that describe her fields of activity as an academic and an activist and they've also written a biography about her achievements as a feminist and a land rights advocate and an actor. On her ORCID profile she named the universities where she studied and been employed so that's the organisations that she's related to and then IATSIS, the Australian Women's Register and ORCID all know publications that she's authored. They're not the same ones but all those pieces of information come together to form a more complete picture about her life and her work than any single source does. It's a great benefit to a user who comes along and finds this record in Trove. And there are also some clever infrastructure benefits that come along with this service. So this Trove container record is the amalgam of records from four different organisations. IATSIS, the Australian Women's Register, Libraries Australia and ORCID. In the background, we keep all of their local system numbers. So you can ask us for IATSIS record A22464 and Trove will return this big container record for Marcia Langton. They all resolve to this overarching persistent identifier and we call that the NLA party identifier. It always has the form nla.gov.au slash nla.party dash and their unique number. So Marcia Langton's is this one with 615464 on the end. Now all records in the people zone group identifiers for that person into a single container. So if a university has records for their researchers, they can add them to Trove. Trove will put it into the bucket for that person and then they can ask for their own record back and they'll get all the other related identifiers that Trove knows are associated with that person. The party identifier is persistent so the URL will always resolve even if the system changes. It can be used by anyone to refer to Marcia Langton. That's background on how Trove aggregates records for a person. This then goes on to play an important role in how RDA can identify researchers. So here's a re record for a researcher named Kim Anderson. It was established by the University of Adelaide and then later Kim set up an ORCID for herself and a Libraries Australia authority record was also created. Trove brings all three of those records together into this one container. So now Kim has a persistent party identifier in Trove. Over at RDA she's added a number of data sets like this one and she's also associated with a research project. Its research project description in RDA as well as the data set and the Trove party record all include that same NLA party identifier in the metadata. Because they all include the NLA party identifier, systems like RDA can automatically bring together all the different bits of data from different contributors and different local systems and build a picture of Kim's current research, which is just what RDA does. Now if Kim were to move to a new institution and get a new local identifier in their system, it doesn't matter. As long as she uses her NLA party identifier, then services like RDA and Trove 
are able to tell that it's the same Kim Anderson that previously worked at the University of Adelaide. When the NLA party identifier is used, we can collect together all the research someone has done, no matter where they've done it or what system it's identified in. A similar situation exists with the funding, and Monica already touched on this a little bit. So hopefully you know about that guide that Core released last year that lets us know how to tag repository records with ARC and NHMRC grant numbers so that we all add them in the same format to repository records for publications and for research. The format is the permanent URL, which currently resolves to RDA. Hopefully everyone's seen this before, but if they haven't, it's the standard prefix, the funder, then the grant number. So in my example here, I've got an ARC funded project LX0881890. If a user goes to that URL, they're taken to the page in RDA where they get the overview of the project. In Trove, if you search for the same grant number in the same Perl format, you'll find 18 publications that are associated with that same grant. Now those publications aren't all held by the same institutions. Um, they're held by different repositories, but they've all put the grant number in the same format. So the first one is the UQ Institutional Repository, the second one is the University of Wollongong, and because they both use the same format of the grant number, they both came back in my search. So just for a quick look, here's what the record from the University of Wollongong looks like in Trove. You can see the ARC grant number, it's in the right format, it's on the record. We're also now getting those grant numbers in the same format added to the records in the people zone, and researchers are actually doing this for themselves. So when a person includes that they've worked on a particular project, a particular grant number, we use that information to further broaden the picture of their research without them needing to do any more. So the first author on this paper is someone called Sara Dolnikar. She has one of those container records in Trove. And on the record we got from ORCID about her, she included that she'd worked on a number of ARC funded research projects, including this one that I've circled. She included the grant number in the correct format. It's the same grant number that we saw in RDA and the same grant number that's been tagged in those 18 publications in Trove. Now, Sarah doesn't have to include the 18 publications in her record here that describes her as a person. Trove can simply use that standard format identifier to link through to all the publications tagged with the grant number. So clicking that returns a user to those 18 articles. Trove didn't actually do anything, it just relied on the same grant number given to us in Sarah's record from ORCID and the repository records. Most important thing is that a user doesn't have to know how all this metadata works. They don't even necessarily have to understand what a grant is. From her biography, they can simply click through and discover more information that they didn't know they wanted. So wrapping up, what are the benefits of including these identifiers? Well, including a persistent identifier for a person allows systems like RDA and Trove to identify different bits of research, different data sets, publications, bring them together and relate them to their creator. It also allows the link to go back the other way, to link creators to the research they've participated in. Including a research grant number allows us to do similar things for funding grants, to identify the project, bring together the people who worked on it, the data sets and publications that were outputs. When researchers move institutions, it becomes easier to discover and import their previous work. And for end users who are discovering this information, they can expand their search without having to understand how the system works. Now all of that relies on consistently using the same format of identifier across institutions. When we all use the same format, then these automated, automated systems can do a great job of bringing together research outputs from a single project and across a researcher's career. I might leave it there and hand it back to you, Susanna.